Hi, I have reviewed many digital multimeters on this channel by now, and in this video we will take a look at which ones are more suitable for low burden voltage current measurements. At full scale, the burden voltages for most of the digital multimeters are quite high, typically ranging anywhere between half a volt to one volt, depending on the shunt resistors in use for the current measurements. Most of the time the burden voltage does not impact the circuit under test significantly, and the burden voltage can be usually compensated to a degree by adjusting the supply voltage. And this method usually works well when the current is somewhat constant. However, raising the supply voltage does not always work. This is especially true for circuits that have a high dynamic current range during operation, and high burden voltage could cause significant fluctuation in the voltage supplied to the circuit under test, and resulting in the circuit not working properly. The full-scale burden voltage on DMMs is typically similar across microamp, milliamp, and amp ranges. So to minimize the burden voltage, you want to choose the highest current range possible. This is where high count or higher resolution multimeter comes in handy. On the workbench, I have a lineup of these four multimeters, and you probably have noticed that they are all 10,000 counts plus meters with the AN8009 on the far left being a 10,000 counts multimeter and the HP770D on the far right being a 40,000 counts meter. And the two in the middle are the AN870 and HT118E. These are both 20,000 counts meters. One thing in common for these multimeters is that in the amp measurement range, they all have a 0.1 milliamp current resolution, as you can see on the displays here. With this resolution, you can easily measure down to 10 milliamps with an acceptable error tolerance. This is more than adequate for most of the measurements you will be doing, and better yet, in the amp range, the burden voltage is significantly lower than, say, using a milliamp current range for the same current measurement. Now, not all 10,000 counts or 20,000 counts meters offer this resolution, unfortunately, and noticeably missing from this lineup is my Unity UT61E+. That meter has 22,000 counts, but the amp range only has a resolution of 1 milliamp. So let me just show you here. You can see that right now we're in the amp range, and you can see we only have 1 milliamp resolution here. And all the meters here have a 0.1 milliamp resolution. This is somewhat disappointing, in my opinion. Now I have put all these meters in series, as you can see here, and using my HP 6181C to output a constant current at roughly 100 milliamps. As you can see, all these meters are roughly showing the same current readings. The discrepancies should be within the spec tolerance, which we are not going to get into in this video. Now, let's check out the burden voltage across each of these multimeters. For this measurement, I'm using the Unity UT61E in the millivolt range to measure the voltage drop across the terminals here. Let's take a look here. For the ANA009, the voltage drop is... Uh, it's minus... 3.24 millivolts. Oh, I know what is going on here. I'm going to swap these two leads here. I did not notice the minus in front of the measurement here, and it doesn't really matter, but let me swap these. So that will be more in line with all the other measurements, and also the reading now is a lot closer here. Let's uh, take a look again. So it's around 3.33 millivolts. And I'm going to do a few of these measurements and uh, later on show you a table of the readings for each of the meters. And for the ANA70, let's see, that is roughly 2.63. For the Kiwitz, it is at 4.43. And for the HP770D, that is at 3.4. 1, 4 millivolts. So as you just saw, this is actually quite impressive, as for 100 milliamps, we only got about 3 millivolts voltage drop, and we still managed to get that 0.1 milliamp resolution. Now for comparison, I have switched these meters to the milliamp ranges, and let's do the burden voltage measurements again. Of course, I left the AN009 in the milliamp measurement range as it does not have a separate amp measurement range. So let's uh, measure the voltage drop across the other three meters. 
So let's see the ANA70. And now, by the way, I have changed the UT61E plus to the volt range now is 0.28 volts for the chi weights. It's 0 0.33, 0 0.34 volts. And how about the 770D? And that is 0 0.21 volts. You can see the clear advantage of using the amp range to do this measurement instead of using milliamp ranges as far as the burden voltage is concerned. Of course, the trade-off is the reduced current resolution. But most of the time, with the extra digit, even with amp range, the resolution should be sufficient. Interestingly though, while the ANA70 has the lowest burden voltage in the amp range, the whole peak meter actually has the lowest burden voltage in the milliamp range. The ANA70 and the HP770D are the clear winner here with the lowest burden voltages in this lineup. Now, to be fair though, one reason is because both of these meters measure up to 20 amps versus the 10 amps for the other two meters. But the other two meters, burden voltages are not bad either. The gem of the pack, in my opinion, is the ANA009. Consider you can buy it for just over $10. For that price, this performance level is actually quite impressive. So while you can use the amp current range to measure milliamps with just about any multimeters and you also get that significant lower burden voltage, the meters I showed here in this video can give you that one extra digit for improved accuracy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this in the future. I will catch up the next time.